I have a large script called the AdventureWorks Creation Script, containing over 7,000 lines. As you can imagine, it can be quite overwhelming for new employees to understand and navigate, unless they have been with the company for a long time. Debugging and tracing the script can also be difficult, as there is often no documentation provided. I highly recommend checking out this library and its concepts. Integrating it into your project can lead to impressive results. To making something clear, traceable, documentable, and easier to maintain and control is crucial. To simplify this process, EasyDB Migrator, also known as EasyDB, can help to make things more organized and efficient. Now, I have a test database here, let me check if it's empty or not. Yeah, it appears to be empty. Let's go and try to create some entities of this database using the library instead of Direct Script or Management Studio. First I open the simple project that doesn't need separate units and classes, instead of that you will create some classes on the fly with two anonymous methods for upgrade and downgrade. To do the job, there are three steps to follow. The first step is initialization, which involves obtaining the connection string, establishing the database connection, and creating other necessary objects. Upon initial connection to the database, a table called EasyDBInfo will be automatically created. This table is responsible for keeping track of versioning information for the library and database. Here we have a connection param which is a record. This is available for each database engine and has different record members depending on the target's connection string, such as T-SQL connection params, MySQL connection params, and more. Since it is a record, there is no need to create and free it. Then you should initialize another object called runner and define it in the private section of the current forms class. And there is an event called on log. This event will provide some info when fires. I use them in this memo. Here as you can see the code. You can use this information in various ways, such as sending it via telegram, email, cloud notification services, and more. Once the connection is established, EasyDB will attempt to create the versioning information table or retrieve the latest applied version from an existing table. Next, you have the option to configure additional settings, though they are not required. However, I highly recommend using the Use Internal Thread option to prevent your application from becoming locked. Let me quickly explain some options. Enabling the Log All Executions setting will log all executions for each activity and transaction, while the False setting will only log when there is an exception. Additionally, the Internal Thread option utilizes an anonymous thread for improved performance and a better user interface experience, such as displaying a progress bar by adjusting the related configuration. Lastly, the Delayed Execution option is used solely for testing purposes and is only being used here to demonstrate progress. By utilizing the add logger function and assigning an event, you can activate the internal logger. Including a log event is not required, but if you wish to display information to the user, it is recommended to define a callback event. Moreover, consider this commented line here. If you use it in this way, you will have a text file including log messages. I don't need a text file, so I commented this line for now. The next step involves adding the necessary migrations. Before anything else, it is necessary to clear the runner. You can add one migration at a time. As an example, I have four migrations here. Note that, we have a T migration class that actually is that structured object that will manage upgrade or downgrade of each version. The constructor for this class requires several parameters to provide versioning information, including the entity name and a flexible big int database version that can accommodate different formats. The version number is generated using a combination of date and time. Additionally, the author or developer name and a description, which could include a link to a JIRA task or task number in another issue tracker, must be specified. Finally, Two anonymous methods must be specified, an up method for upgrading and a down method for downgrading operations. 
For this example, we are utilizing an exact TSQL script to be executed as an ad hoc query. For version 1 of our sample, we will create a table in the upgrade method and drop it in the downgrade method, as expected. The table will be modified and a new field added with the use of version 2, while version 3 will create a new table and add an additional field. At runtime, this library checks versions and performs required updates. Let me run this sample and observe how it works in action. At this moment it has just created the versioning table. If you refresh the list, you will see that a new table called EasyDB version info has been added. What fields are present in this table? Version, date of apply, the author who has added upgrade methods, or let's say the developer who has done the task, and a description field also has been added. Now I click on this button, add a migration, as you know after this upgrade we expect a table called TB users added in version 1, a new field 2 in version 2, a new field 3, and TB customers in version 3 must be created. As you can see, all expectations have been met and new entities are now ready to be used. Please take note that in version 3, we underwent two migrations. As a result, the log now includes descriptions and authors for both migrations. Well, what about the downgrade? What will happen if I want to revert to version 2 or 1? Downgrade methods will happen one by one and version by version downgrade the database. PB customers must be removed, new field 3, new field 2 and so on. Now I reverted everything to version 1. The mentioned version will be retained while any larger versions will be removed and downgraded. For instance, version 1 will be kept while all other versions will be removed. That's all there is to it. This was the basic usage of this library, quick and easy, but it is more suitable for small projects. For larger projects, it can become challenging to maintain clarity and organization. To tackle bigger projects, I recommend using the advanced mode. Check out the next video tutorial to learn how to master the advanced features of this library.